Hi everyone, good morning. My name is Samantha and I am the Global Outreach Manager from the POCUS Certification Academy. Uh, please feel free to share in the chat box where you're from. Uh, I am in Washington, D.C. currently uh, near the POCUS Certification Academy headquarters and known as Intellios. So we are a part of three sister companies. Uh, one is ARDMS, which you may have heard of, and uh, the other is APCA, APCA. So thanks everyone for joining us this morning. Uh, as I mentioned, I will be the facilitator today. We're going, ahead, we're going to go ahead and get started now, so all microphones have been muted. So please do use the chat box for any questions that you have at any point throughout the webinar. We'll have time for a brief question and answer at the end, uh, so feel free to share any questions as they come up throughout the presentation. We're honored today to have Dr. Liu with us. Um, she will be our, our webinar presenter. Dr. Liu is the director of the ultrasound imaging department at the Air Force Medical Center in Beijing, China. She is on both the ultrasonic committee of National Health Commission capacity building and continuing education. And she is also on the cerebral and cervical vascular ultrasound committee of Chinese Association of Ultrasound in Medicine and Engineering. Dr. Liu has been treating and caring for patients on the front line of the coronavirus pandemic and we are pleased to welcome her today to share how she is using ultrasound for lung and cardiac imaging. So without further ado, thank you, Dr. Liu, for being with us today. Thank you very much for your introduction, Dr. Falcon. It's my honor to be invited here to share my experience. The development of pandemic COVID-19 in some part of the world is worrying. It's been a tough time for us all. As a medical staff, I believe everyone wants to do their part to this battle. Ultrasound has developed as an invaluable uh, tool in diagnosis and management in the uh, intensive care unit. It has been proved to play an essential role in COVID-19 patients in ICU. So first, let's begin with three cases to see how critical ultrasound works through in ICU. The first one is a 51 years old female who complained about dyspnea. She has no special history of uh, tuberculosis or pneumonia or lung tumor, etc. She had an echocardiography. Lung axis view and the full chamber view showed an enlarged right ventricle the left ventricle systolic function is acceptable. The short axis view shows an enlarged right ventricle and a flat interventricular septum with a typical design. That is, the left ventricle looks like a letter D. It means there is hypertension in the right ventricle or pulmonary uh, artery. The regurgitation spectrum of pulmonary valve and tricuspid valve suggests that there may be pulmonary hypertension. Because the patient's D-dimer is known to be elevated at this time, we directly examined her lower extremity blood vessels and then found multiple intramuscular venous uh, thrombosis. We have reasons to speculate about pulmonary embolism. And the CT angiography verified there's multiple pulmonary artery embolism. The second case is a 77 years old female who also complained about uh, dyspnea. She had a history of pneumonia. Lung scanning showed there is a consolidation in back area of area 5 and 6, and there is newly emerging widened B line in area 1 and 2. So uh, we give her an echocardiography, and uh, there is an enlarged left ventricle and obvious cardiac systolic dysfunction. And there's no positive findings in vascular scanning. So
So the lung finding is doubted to be cardiogenic. The third case is case is a 16 years old female. Multiple images confirm that she suffered from intracranial vascular embolism. She cannot complain about the dyspnea because she was unable to spoke. However, on the third day after admission, she suddenly had a decrease in oxygen saturation. We gave her a quick lung scanning and found that there were multiple consolidation areas in her lung field, but her chest CT was normal the day before. Then echocardiography was applied, and the images indicate abnormal right ventricular uh, ventricular wall motion. Pulmonary artery spectrum indicates pulmonary hypertension because of a small notch on the early systole. Combined with her history, we wonder if she had pulmonary embolism. The right ventricle is not. Very large. Then again, we turn to her lower extremities to look at the femoral vein and find, and we did find thrombus in、uh, in the lumen. The patient took another CT scan to confirm the diagnosis of pulmonary embolism. This is the CT scan within two days before and after. So from the above three cases, we can understand that reasonable cardiopulmonary ultrasound combined with vascular analysis may help、uh, identify the cause of dyspnea efficient,、uh, efficiently and accurately. What we need to be prepared for ICU application is the ability to analyze problems. Systematically, clear target orientation, and efficient inspection. First of all, be prepared for、uh, for the ICU.、Uh, there should be a basic、uh, equipment of ultrasound machine. At least three types of probe should be equipped. And.、Uh, A high-frequency convex array scanning probe is good for pediatric and deep vessels. Here are some basic operating principle in ICU.、Uh, the machine shall be easy should be easy to switch probes, and uh, uh, there should be enough preset、uh, inspection conditions. Such as echocardiogram or abdominal organs or blood vessels, etc. And there should be enough memory for images because many images need to be analyzed after leaving the isolation ward, and many cases need to be followed and compared after therapy. And reduced posture transformation of patients and maximize the examination in one position. And、uh, critical care ultrasound is target guided. We need to know some basic knowledge of the patients, including the medical history, the present conditions, and what clinicians care about most. Of course, for a COVID-19 patient, you need to read the CT findings first, and we need no basic parameter knowledge and common indicators of monitoring instruments. I summarize the trilogy of cardiopulmonary circulation disease, that is, from echocardiography, lung ultrasound, and and for vessels. The examination. Order of heart and lung is not fixed necessarily. It depends on the target. So many dangerous and urgent diagnoses are based on the understanding of echocardiography. So I should say this part of work must be done by qualified doctors or technicians. For example,、uh, 
uh, by ARDMS or by POCUS. The key content of the echocardiography for COVID-19 patients include, uh, you need to know the main purpose of echo, include basic disease screening and the evaluation of heart function, and combined with blood volume, uh, blood vessels, uh, inferior venous cava, to have the blood volume assessment. So I won't introduce how to do echo in detail. Here some tips may be helpful. Uh, pay attention to the measurement of chamber size and leave traces every time because the size of atrial uh, ventricular cavity reflects the change of pressure and volume. The combination of atrial ventricular chamber size, cardiac function, and blood biochemical indexes, such as myocardioazimates, is the key guiding data for later treatment. Characteristic heart disease of patients in ICU should be pay attention. Um, characteristic ventricular dysfunction and abnormal hemodynamic response due to stress, uh, cardiomyopathy, explosive myocarditis, and the septic shock under the conditions of infection, and trauma, and the stroke. Do not ignore diastolic heart failure with normal systolic function. Patients with ventilator are prone to occur. Please pay attention to atrial size, parameters related to diastolic function, indicators of inferior vena cava, and the B-line distribution and density. It is already proved lung ultrasound is very useful in this pandemic. It's easy for people who have the basis of ultrasound to learn. The sketch of body surface projection can help to better understand the lobes corresponding to the ultrasonic image area. According to the um, parasternal line, the anterior axillary line, the posterior axillary line, and the paraspinal line, we may divide the lung field into trial areas, as shown in the figure. In order to facilitate understanding and memory, I summarized another trilogy for a lung ultrasound that outlines the normal and diseased state of, the, uh, of lungs. So from A to C, so A line, B line, and consolidation. So first, let's begin from A line. Before A line, we need to know the pleural line. Pleural line is a, is a linear reflection formed by the interface echo between pleura and the lung surface, which is smooth and uniform in normal condition. It is sliding with the breadth, the thickness less than uh, 0 0.0 millimeter. The A line is these bright lines that are equidistant from the skin to the pleural line. So A line is parallel and equidistant to pleural line. So the image on the left is longitudinal section parallel to the intercostal space, and the right one is perpendicular to the intercostal space. We can see the strong echo of the rib and the sound shadow behind it, which makes the plural line seems to be interrupted. We can judge the continuity of the plural line according to the breath. If we use convex array probe for scanning, the normal image is as follows. Between the strong echo of two ribs represented by the yellow line and the sun shadow behind it, there is a A line parallel to the plural line. This sign looks like a bat. We call it a, uh, a bat sign. B line is a hyperechoic line that originates from the plural line and is perpendicular to the floor line and radiates to the deep part of the lung field. The appearance of B line indicates the change of water content in alveolar interstitium, 
the decrease of air content. Air content. So it can be generally understood that the higher the density of B line, the more advanced the degree of pulmonary edema. As the disease progresses, the B line fusion occurs, and the distance between B line becomes indistinguishable. With further um, with further with further aggravation, all the B line within the intercostal lung field appear hyperalkalic, white and fused. That that like this one. And some even covering the coastal uh, acoustic shadow, which is called white lung, like the uh, lower right uh, image. When the disease develops further, increased liquid content will lead to complete disappearance of gas, making the sonography of lung tissue look similar to solid organs like liver and the spleen. The hyperalkalic in the lung parenchymal is unabsorbed air in uh, bron bronchi. The linear high frequency probe is recommended to pediatric e examination. It is helpful to show more details of solid lung with blood flow distribution. More, uh, more fluid exudation or leaking out. Uh, cause pleural effusion. Pulmonary effusion often appears in the gravity dependent area, where consolidation of lung tissue can be seen in the liquid dark area with hyper echo of unsorbed gas. The consolidated tissue can be vibrated by the heartbeat to produce a slight pulsation, which is called pulmonary pulsation. The most common disease status in ICU is pulmonary edema and the manifestation of pneumonia in this pandemic. So in the original normal area, especially in front area of 1 and 2, emerge wide and B, B line. We need to suspect whether there is pulmonary edema. Then the next step should be check the parameters of echocardiography and the IVC diameter and the respiratory variability. Combined with the patient's medical history and blood biochemical indicators, we can quickly make a judgment on whether there is a cardiogenic change. The percent of pneumonia is in the infected area, thickened interrupted pleural line could be fine, and the disappearance of A line, and the different degree of, the, of B line. That means Different alveolar interstitial syndrome in different degrees. When the lesion is more serious, the consolidation area could be seen. The consolidation has no distribution characteristic in the acute stage of pneumonia, but it has obvious uh, gravity-dependent distribution characteristics in the long-term bedridden uh, bed patients in the ICU and the ARDS patients. That is, the consolidation changes in the posterior and the lower lobes of uh, both lungs. And the different amount of pleural effusion could be seen according to the degree of uh, disease. I am very grateful to my friend Dr. Huang Yi from Xi'an Chest Hospital who provide me with the following COVID-19 patients' lung scanning pictures from the front line. In the early stage, CT scan showed a typical patchy and large round glass-like shadows, 
and many of lesions go directly to the subflora. So these characters give uh, give ultrasound chance to image. The ultrasonography showed thickened interrupted pleura line on the infected focus. A line uh, A line disappeared and the B line in different dense could be found in this fusion mode. Uh, we may call it waterfall sign or diffused distribution mode. Call, we call it white lung sign. Compared with uh, B line caused by cardiogenic pulmonary edema, the B line fusion in COVID-19 patients is more common and relatively fixed. The B line edge is more fuzzy and has no bifurcation sign, and uh, the starting point is blunt. In the advanced stage, more consolidation area could be found, is, uh, except for those with edema. The size of the consolidation area is related to the disease condition, and the distribution gra uh, gradually shows the characteristics of gravity dependence. In the recovery period, we may see the reduction of consolidation area and the B-line density and the distribution. It has been proved that the ventilation in the prone position is helpful for the recovery of COVID-19 pneumonia. And ultrasound can help to observe the effect in this treatment. And we need no limitations of ultrasound, of, of lung ultrasound. As shown in the figure in the upper right corner, the lesions can be displayed by uh, ultrasound only when the edema and the consolidation reach the pleura. On the contrary, if the lesions do not reach the pleura, the center of the lesion cannot be identified and evaluated. So there is limited value in particular sites and the mild condition, and the limited specificity of some disease we need combined with more clinical evidence or proofs. Obesity, subcutaneous and emphysema will influence the image quality. Scapular or rib or large dressing cover uh, could make some blind area of uh, scanning. The positioning and the quantitative evaluation depends on experience and uh, cooperation. For vascular, the diameter of uh, inferior venous cava and its variability between inspiration and expiration can re reflect the pressure of left retrium, uh, which could further be used to evaluate the volume state and the liquid responsiveness. Due to the time limit, I won't introduce more about manipulation. The image of, in, uh, of IVC is usually obtained by a subsephoid view or a subcoastal view in supine position. So we need no, we need no, we, we should note that many patients' waist and the abdomen are padded with a waist pad, and uh, the angle of the bed uh, will influence the um, accuracy of measurement. So measurement for position should be fixed and consistent and, consist, and on the consistent section. The measurement method is different with or without ventilator. It's very important for beginners. And uh, the evaluation uh, will be inaccurate with pleural effusion and the asset. Medium to large tricuspid regurgitation will affect the results too. The extremity vascular scanning is usually applied together with cardiopulmonary uh, examination to help find the origin of uh, dyspnea caused by pulmonary artery embolism. This is the template I designed specially for ICU in our center. Some hospitals in pandemic area think it's uh, useful for reference, uh, so I'd like to share it and translate in English if it may help you. 
It's easy to use. Just tick and fill in the numbers, deliver the report on the spot, and uh, with uh, save time and effort. I suggest that the report uh, should indicate the basic vital signs of the patients when you do the examination, such as PEEP value, heart rate, or etc. In fact, in the critical unit of newness and the pediatrics, uh, ultrasound is more meaningful and dependent on than adults. Uh, however, I, I won't introduce it today because of the time limit. I just uh, want to emphasize this valuable tool. It's highly dependent and highly recommended. Because of the characteristics of newborn, ultrasound imaging will be easier and clearer. With a linear airy probe, you can scan the whole lung area of a baby. Or with a high-frequency microcovix probe, you may check the brain, the heart, and the lung at one time and make a comprehensive evaluation. I'd like to introduce two more cases to conclude the application of critical ultrasound. Uh, this is a very exciting case from Jingyin Tan Hospital, Wuhan. I appreciate Dr. Chu Yali support these images. This is a 79 years old female who, um, who had a fever, cough, and uh, uh, have the nuclear acid test positive. She's a COVID-19 patient. And she suffered sudden chest tightness, shortness of breath, and the clinical suspicion of uh, pneumothorax. So they applied for an ultrasound scanning. The lung scanning showed the appearance of B line, excluding the ex uh, existence of pneumothorax. And then a quick scanning with the same probe showed a widened IVC and a very fresh thrombus in the lumen. So she reported the critical situation immediately. The clinician gave the patient emergency thrombolysis. Then changed the, at the same time, uh, she changed the probe, gave a quick echo. The echo showed arrhythmia like tremor. In that very moment, there showed fresh thrombus in pulmonary artery. That's really critical. Ten minutes after thrombolysis, pulmonary artery looked clearer, um, and the patient's oxygen saturation increased significantly. And two hours later, the patient recovered her mind. She was pulled back from the death line once, once by ultrasound. The last case is a 40 years old male uh, who suffered a rupture dissecting, a dissecting an aneurysm of the left vertebral artery and the subarachnoid hemorrhage. He was transferred to our ICU on the seventh day of onset. We gave him a systematic baseline assessment. The cervical vascular ultrasound showed the spectrum Doppler wave of left vertebral artery was a small sharp wave with low velocity, which means that the distal segment of the artery was occluded. And, uh, and we gave him an echocardiogram, showed the heart, uh, echocardiogram showed normal. By that time, the left atrium size is 32 millimeters, and there was no venous thrombosis in the lower extremity, low edema in the uh, intestinal wall, and the liver and kidney looks, uh, looks good. On the 16 days, the condition suddenly changed. The blood test showed signs of infection. The BNP is very high. We gave him an echocardiogram, and this time the left atrium enlarged to 39 mm. The Doppler indexes reflecting diastolic function also indicate the increase of left atrial filling pressure. 
The diameter of IVC was enlarged, and the respiratory variability was decreased. And compared compared with the baseline, the hypothermia protection state at that time, the flow rate of cerebral blood flow increased obviously by transcranial color Doppler. And we also give him a lung scanning. There is a broad B line in the anterior region of the chest, which is not found in the basic state scanning. This sign indicates that the patient has pulmonary edema, and the consolidation area in the posterior region is larger than that in the basic state. And uh, we give him the bronchoscope bronco, uh, suction and the flushing. At the area of consolidation, uh, sh of the consolidation area sh uh, shrinks after the treatment. We can see that there are more air hyperacalic field inside, which means that more air expands the occluded branches. The lavage fluid were cultured and found to have bacterial infection. Then he was treated with antibacterial uh, therapy and the strict fluid management. Negative balance was used and observed in the following days and gave him the echocardiogram again, the left atrium size decreased and the parameters of diastolic function also improved. The diameter and the respiratory variability of IVC was better and the, the blood flow of uh, middle cerebral artery recovery. The broad B line of the uh, thoracic region gradually decreased until the until it disappeared by the lung scanning. X-ray also confirmed this improvement. The application of ultrasound can reduce the radiation exposure. So in ICU, especially in the current situation of pandemic, the most important task of ultrasound ultrasonography are multiple combined assessments. And the, the basic requirement of the uh, scanning is quick, sure, and comprehensive. And uh, uh, we need experience in ultrasound diagnosis and clinical basis. Scanning speed should be fast, saving more images for later analysis and dynamic evaluation. And pay attention to the traps and evaluate all the parameters objectively. And uh, um, Reasonable interval of re-examination should be established. And uh, that means uh, please take care of yourself. The help and application of ultrasound are not limited to those uh, I mentioned above. For more details and uh, marvelous use of ultrasound in COVID-19, uh, please refer to the special issue published uh, two weeks ago by Advanced Ultrasound in Diagnosis and Therapy magazine. There are more COVID-19 case analysis and reports, and many novel and advanced researches from excellent Chinese doctors. My daughter was moved by heroes who cut their hair to better and, quick, uh, and quickly fit in the protective clothing and she created this painting for the great Chinese medical workers. And um, when, she heard, uh, when she heard about this lecture, she made another painting uh, to, to all the, to all the uh, frontline heroes. I also pay my highest respect to, uh, to all who rushed to the very front, uh, to the front line of the pandemic area. I hope our experience be helpful. Hope your families, relatives, and friends to stay well. Thank you for your listening. Thank you for the question. Yes, I am responsible for the training staff. Uh, during the pandemic, 
The first thing to be educated is how to do well in protection, how to disinfect the instruments, and how to deal with the fever patients found by accident in an emergency. We should know the processing flow. Then the emphasis education of focus is knowledge of lung ultrasound. When do I add ultrasound in the patient's triage process? Uh, when the patient has any high-risk medical history that needs to be examined, an ultrasound should be used for triage, such as uh, the high-risk situation including um, diabetes, coronary heart disease, uh, renal failure, and so on. Many basic uh, disease system uh, situation. And uh, when there are symptoms that need different, uh, differential um, diagnosis, the most common is dyspnea, such as the three cases introduced at the beginning of this lecture. And uh, I don't have experience on triage of COVID-19 patients. I heard about an Italian team reported work on triage patients by ultrasound, but I haven't seen the, the article yet. Uh, maybe, maybe I didn't uh, check, it, uh, check the article. I think it must be a meaningful work. The prolonged cardiac and lung damage in patients with COVID-19, I think it will take time for this question to be answered with more evidence. A Chinese expert team found uh, that the incidence of myocardial injury in hospitalized patients with cardiovascular disease was almost uh, almost 20 percent. So cardiovascular disease is an uh, important complication of COVID-19 patients. And about the prolonged lung damage, um, I haven't seen any report um, of lung damage by ultrasound. So I think it will take time. According to some Chinese experts' report, the kidney of the COVID-19 patient will show signs of gradual enlargement. Um, as the disease progresses, the echo of renal parenchyma becomes hyperechoic. So I think it's uh, it's it's maybe it's due to the uh, so-called inflammatory storm. And then the same that the same change also emerged in the in the liver. So observation of renal artery is meaningful. According to the report, increased blood flow resistance and the decreased velocity uh, may indicate a poor prognosis. Uh, the last thing we'll mention is that the POCUS Certification Academy does offer certificates in lung ultrasound, uh, and those can be found online at uh, POCUS.org as well. And um, right here on your screen, you'll see uh, a little bit more information about those certificates. We offer a plethora of certificates, but we know that right now with COVID-19, lung ultrasound is especially needed, uh, as well as proper training and certification of those. So. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us today. A special thank you for Dr. Liu and for sticking with us through all of these technical difficulties. Uh, we hope that everyone has a great weekend and that you'll join us again for a future webinar. Thank you everyone. Have a great day.